Kia ora koto. Hello everyone, I'm Dr Lorna Strachan from the University of Auckland and today I'm going to be speaking to you about hybrid field teaching in Aotearoa, New Zealand and I'm going to be presenting on behalf of Drs James Muirhead and Mike Rao from the University of Auckland and Dr Ryan Patterson from Stanford. When we submitted our abstract from the AGU, New Zealand was in quite a different position from the one it is today. So we perhaps foolishly um, added the second part to our title saying lessons learned from one year into the future. And I will discuss this now. So um, as of mid-March 2020 last year, some of you may be aware that New Zealand had quite a useful um, COVID response whereby the country locked down hard and fast and we had a relatively short um, lockdown of about six weeks and um, relatively few deaths, which was great news. And this meant that life went back to being pretty much back to normal um, following that. But nevertheless, those six weeks were the catalyst for some big changes in our teaching. So this meant in 2020 and for the first half of 2021, we were able to have our lectures face to face and go in the field with our students. But well, um, Delta hit and it hit New Zealand. And here in Auckland, we have just come out of a 110 day lockdown but we're still under significant restrictions here. So I kind of want you to think that this is kind of a back to the future two type scenario. So we were speaking to you from the future, but now we're in the past, but given where New Zealand is on the dateline on the planet, I'm speaking to you from the future again at the same time. So, I wanted to touch on something that I think is a little bit like Marmite. So for those of you in the US, I'm not sure if you have this delightful condiment. And here I've shown two examples, the British version and the New Zealand version. And there's much debate as to which is superior. But the reason I show you uh, Marmite is that people's views in academia of the merits of virtual teaching over physical teaching are a bit like the effects of Marmite. You either love it or you hate it. So there are basically, if you look at Twitter and you ask people this question, basically sit back and watch the array of answers that come in. And there are those who basically prefer physical field teaching. So by that, I mean face to face, in person, at the outcrop teaching. And there's a lot of literature on the merits um, in terms of teaching and learning for the students as to why physical field teaching is so successful. And most of us know this, so you know, we're talking active learning, a fully embodied sensory experience, hands-on experience, and um, some real world observations. And probably for most of us, this is how we were trained. But there are also those who are big fans of the virtual field teaching concept. It's not a new concept. It's actually been around for a couple of decades now and has been shown to be very effective in terms of its learning. And um, again, it's really useful for engaging in active learning. Of course, we don't have that full embodied sensory experience of the field, but we are able to focus on key observational skills that are fundamental anywhere. Um, we can increase our digital skills, but importantly, there are some advantages. So virtual field trips can allow for flexible, fle flexible scheduling. They can actually work very well for large class sizes. So by that, I mean classes of over 100. And they mean that the field can literally be accessible for anyone and your field trips can go anywhere, both on or off the planet and be easily done at home. Well, we want to um, 
touch on this concept of hybrid field teaching and we borrow this definition from an excellent paper by Linda and she defines hybrid teaching as face-to-face -face activities that combine technology media mediated activities so that there's more active learning in the face-to-face -face setting as well as more intentional guidance when students are learning in outside the classroom and so this is a generic um, definition for hybrid teaching and so we are suggesting that the hybrid field teaching pedagogy so using that hybrid teaching idea but applying it to field teaching is an absolute no-brainer for the best opportunity for teaching our students so the idea is we get the best of both of these different styles of field teaching so we get the best of physical field teaching and the best of virtual field teaching opportunities. But the difference here is that we integrate them together to form a singular experience. So what's our motivation for changing to a hybrid field teaching method? Well, one, it reflects our own research practices. So this is um, a DEM of the seafloor off New Zealand, and this is where I work. So I spend much of my time in ArcMap looking at 3000 meter water depth geomorphology. Some of us also really focus in on surface capture. So whether this is of an outcrop or a small scale structure such as this ammonoid, and we can manipulate these data in some really nice bespoke geological software. Here's an example of one, um, VRGS, but there are others out there and I'll discuss the one that we've used. Whereas contrast this with your typical undergraduate field toolkit. So typical um, tools include a compass clinometer, a clipboard, a pencil and an and eraser. Now, I'm not saying that this is not good equipment, particularly for introductory level students, but there is a big disconnect between this and the kinds of equipment that most of us are using for our own field practice. Also, the other motivating factor has to be the, the COVID-19 global pandemic. And so the idea is that, that perhaps we may be having more of this or COVID may continue, I hope not, but may for some years to come. So we need a more nimble form of teaching in the field that can counter and basically any big catastrophes like this. So we've embedded this hybrid field teaching method into our curricula over three different undergraduate papers. And these are all at the advanced level. So we, this is the final year of the student, students Bachelor of Science in Earth Science and um, their third years. So we've done this in a course called Sedimentary Systems. And here we've kind of dipped our toe into the hybrid field teaching method. So we have a one day physical field trip, which is synchronous. And by that, I mean, all the students and teachers go together we do the field work together, but this also has an, uh, a guided virtual field trip that the students do in their own time. Next, we've got our course called Earth Science Field Skills, and this involves a big step up in terms of the hybrid teaching methodology. So we have a six day residential field trip to Taranaki on the west coast of the North Island, and this is a synchronous in-person, face-to-face, full sensory experience. But we also have a virtual field trip that is both guided and autonomous, i.e. the students rove and do their own work. And this is developed asynchronously. So the students do this in their own time. Now, some of the students weren't able to come on the physical field trip. So some of them did this course as a fully virtual field trip option this year. Then our third uh, course it involves five day physical field trip, which is synchronous, um, autonomous virtual field trip work. And in this case, the students were collecting the field data um, on iPads as well. So the, the field data they were collecting was geospatially referenced immediately. So I'm going to run through the technologies that were used in these different courses. 
So for the sedimentary systems course, this was a guided virtual field trip. So this had fixed locations. We provided context um, for the students in Google Earth and used a 360 degree GoPro for building much of the material. So this was a combination of both videos and photos that were housed on a YouTube channel and the 360 photos in um, Google Photos. Um, so we had, we built the YouTube channel and the students can zoom in and out of these 360 degree videos. And this was all hosted in a web-based learning management system. And we use one called Canvas here at the University of Auckland. And the students were given a variety of different raw data sets. So granulometry data, um, paleo currents, amongst other things. Next for our uh, Earth Skills course, where we had m a much more integrated use of uh, technology. So we leveraged off Google Earth and we used significantly models from drone surveying of outcrops in Taranaki. So we produced structure from motion photogrammetry 3D models that we hosted in some software called um, Lime. And this was, this was something that we purchased for our course, but the, the models are all available for anyone to look at freely on the web or on a website called V3Geo. We also use something called Photospheres, and this is what we work with Ryan at Stanford in developing, and these are created in software called Pano2VR. And I want you to think of these as Google Street View, but for geoscientists. So you can, it works in exactly the same way. So you get a nice location map showing you where you are and what view you're looking at. You can embed high resolution photos into here and you basically walk through the outcrop. We found this tool to be particularly useful as a reconnaissance tool for the students to step back where they'd been. For that third course, we basically built um, both virtual field trip, drone model measurements and photospheres, but the students also actually collected their field data using iPads with the software, software field move on them. So that meant that they instantly had a way of integrating the drone model measurements that they made with the physical field trip measurements. So we kind of stepped it up a notch in terms of the integration. So how did the students get on with this? So here I'm showing you a couple of pie charts from the 320 course. So this was a course that had 42 students and it is the core third year course for all of our majors from Earth Science. This was a survey that I did um, of the students before the course, asking them how confident or not they were in field work. And you can see that 50% of the class were not confident in their skills while 17% were, none were very confident. After the field trip, we had a dramatic change. So none of our students were not confident and we increased um, immensely their confidence levels. When we asked them a little bit more what they thought of the course, lots of them thought it helped deepen their thinking skills. They asked why all field work wasn't like this and for the sedimentology course, which doesn't have a drone model, the students asked me where was that model? They needed it. So they adapted really quickly. There were some negatives. So the students felt they needed more time in the field. They felt rushed and they weren't quite sure how all of this went together. So what were our lessons learned? So firstly, the students adapted quickly and performed really well. But for us, the work isn't done. So we need to finesse these courses, streamline um, the workflows and the assessments. We need to clearly give the students guidance and reinforce the value of this hybrid method. So as a final point, this took a lot of work, time and resources with our team to develop the resources for the course. But it allows us full flexibility for the ongoing COVID pandemic if we need to go into full lockdown. Thank you and kia ora.